my name is Oe, and uh, what I do is I do operation and process improvement. Um, I also run a two-year-old uh, kitchen uh, food delivery business, and I do uh, kids church volunteers on the side. Uh, we will talk a little bit about the concept of needs, okay? From the type of needs to how needs are met, acceleration of needs that leads to constant needs that becomes pursuing and worship. So this is what we'll be covering tonight. First things first, what fills your schedule? Uh, if I can ask uh, Roca, I hope it's okay uh, if you can just read uh, for everyone, if you can just type in what, what normally fills up your schedule. What do you make sure that it's put in your schedule during the day? Sandy, work, work, work. Ako, work stuff. Si Anne, sleep. Si Iva, Netflix. Lizette, work. Kay, daily Bible sharing with my small group. Trisha, redecorating. Uh, Amy and Pedro, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> Tessa, work. Si Bernadette, work. Vicky, work. Tessa, cooking. Gigi, normal day diving stuff. If not diving, I'm fixing gear, inviting people to dive work. Okay, also work. Okay, so there's a lot of work, so I guess uh, you will relate to my story later. Hospital, working. Oh, si Jen, oh. doctor kasi. Okay, so what I'm flashing to you right now is my typical routine, my schedule. 5.40 a.m., I wake up, I pray a little bit, and I check uh, if everyone's alive and healthy and I do a little bit of push-up and then by 6.45 I start prepping and then by 7 a.m. I start responding to messages, do a little bit of prayer for them or you know some feeling moments and then by 9.15 a.m. I start praying before I before I go through all of the things I need to, to author by 10 o'clock or past then, I usually uh, bug my sisters and my siblings. So as a break, and then by past then, I start working on my kitchen, uh, my food delivery business, and then lunch. So that's an overview, a sample of my schedule. Why do I do this? Why is it that, uh, like I asked you earlier, uh, why is it your schedule is filled up with work, with cooking, with breakfast, lunch, dinner? And I'm sure the breakfast, lunch, dinners for you and your loved ones. And why is my schedule like this? My why's, I'll answer my why's. My why's is because there's importance in it. Uh, there's a lot of exchange, uh, a lot of love exchanged in the interaction. There's a lot of truth, purpose. There's a lot of I matter in what I discuss with them or what I hear from them. And I get involved. So these are the whys, and I want you to remember the whys, okay? And I'm sure you also have your whys, right? Now we go on to the types of needs. The first type of needs I want to explain is physical need. Physical need can be met with physical ways. For example, a good example is I'm hungry. So that's a physical, physical need. So it can be met with food. Another type of need is, let's say I'm exhausted, so I sleep dead. Now, let me digress and go to the second type of need, which we will do a little bit of deep dive on, which is called spiritual need. Spiritual need um, would be the, the whys that I explained earlier, the sense of importance, love, the sense of truth, the sense of purpose, all of that I, I listed. The spiritual need that I listed can this be fulfilled with physical ways? Physical ways like an entity like your business, or your career, your work, or a person. Can this be met by a person? Let's say your children, acceptance of your parents, your lover, your boss, your client. So that is the question that I want to pose tonight on the concept of need. Can spiritual need be met by physical needs? Let's say you're going to say, yes, this can all be met. All of this will be met, right? So 
So as soon as uh, my needs, my spiritual needs are met, I feel important, let's say, uh, through, through um, let's say, my boss, my clients, or my lover, or whoever, right? For example, I feel uh, these are met, so my needs gets constant, so it starts moving, it gets accel it accelerated, then it starts pursuing. By the time I start pursuing, it becomes worship. So what is the long-term impact then if I will say the physical need of, let's say, I want that person or I want my business or I want my career to meet my spiritual needs. The long-term impact is, for example, for an entity is I will start always asking what's next. I've reached this level. So what's next? For if, on the other hand, if it's a person that's going to fit that means, the long-term impact is you place undue pressure and responsibility on that person to be your purpose, to meet your sense of truth, your sense of importance. In short, in the long run, it becomes unsustainable, it becomes impossible and it breaks apart what if i do i'll pull you into a proof of concept which is through my personal story okay my spiritual need is to win i'm competitive the platform i normally use is work i usually use work but it could actually be other things but let's use work as my platform okay so when I set up teams, uh, when I join companies, normally there will be multi-teams, okay? And my team will always be known as the best team. There's no room allowed for mistakes. We never give up. In fact, we never sleep, literally. Those who will work with me knows that I will follow up. I will chase them up even at 3 or 4 in the morning and there's an expectation that there will be a response or else. So the result of that is there's always excellence in our team. There's always title, titles given, awards given by my team. There's money. There's branding. In fact, it, it ends with followers. Just one word, me saying, we stop. Everyone stops. If I say I need funding, I get all the funding. No questions asked. That's how intense our team was. But as I go through on a long-term basis, I started seeing some symptoms coming out of this type of, of met needs, right? So I started winning. So I said, oh, I have to be constantly be the best team, right? And then I became known as the executive dragon. I, people will know me because I, I normally will have two kinds of cell phone. One will be cheap cell phone because I will smash that cell phone over the wall if I'm not happy. I will not throw it on any person, but it, there will always be smashed cell phone over the wall. And in fact, I even received labor case. One of my teammates, I remember, said over the weekend, he had a stroke. In fact, half of his body uh, was paralyzed. And in my head, it's like, oh, ridiculous. Why am I being blamed for this? So I got rewarded. I got money. But then at the back, what I'm seeing as well is it's always never enough. My health started declining and there was no joy. There's emptiness. The thing is, because I kept on getting all of the awards, I started getting, I started thinking, maybe I should just do more. So I accelerated. So it becomes a vicious cycle. If you know systems thinking, going through a vicious, vicious cycle is the worst model to use on a broken process. So it gets accelerated because I don't know what's the solution. What happened? One day, I just said, okay, 
I had to really start thinking and I need to do something about it, but I just don't know what it is. So I prayed and God answered my prayer. It was the most unpleasant answer I received. Three months after that prayer, I woke up, I went to the office, the usual, and I received a note. Everything was taken away from me. Someone in the U.S. took over my team. I lost everything. So, what happened? I have time. I don't have friends. They're all working, right? Someone invited me to attend service, and I got plugged into a, a small Bible study group. The thing is, everyone in my team is 20 years younger than me. So I was like, oh my gosh, I've been placed in the wrong room. The thing is, what I noticed is all of these 20-year-old are like Yoda. I notice what they say makes sense. There's a lot of truth in it. And from someone who's the top three in my business, in my MBA class, I'm, I'm well, I would say I'm smart. I just cannot comprehend why these 20-year-old are so smart. What they're saying always makes sense. This is the psalm that, this is the scripture that I saw. In Psalm 19, verse 7, His laws lead us to the truth, and His ways will change the simple into the wise. In short, I'm hearing truth, but I just don't know why. I don't understand. But I kept on going, right? One day, one of this young 20-year-old Yoda asked me, why don't I just fully accept God since... I'm always attending. I always seem to comprehend and understand the words. So I said, ah, it's corny, it's badoy. I will lose all of my friends. But then I also realized, what will I really lose? My self-imposed coolness. But at that time, I realized at my age, does it matter? It doesn't matter at 40 plus, right? Ergo, it leads to, I did my five wise, my root cause analysis. It leads to since I believe in the truth of what they're saying, which is the in, inside the Bible, I have nothing to lose and not everything to gain. In short, I started pursuing more and more the content. And what I found was the truth, which is God's truth. Meaning, it's okay to not win all the time. It's okay to forgive and if it doesn't work out, it's okay. Everything will be restored. And the most important is, by the end of the day, I really just have, I just have an audience of one, which is God. So in my con the conclusion I had in my personal journey, by the way, this was, this is not like overnight. For me to understand and really agree to this, it took me almost two years to agree to my 20-something Yodas. So the conclusion I had is spiritually, any spiritual need can only be fulfilled by spiritual ways. So the concept of the spiritual need of importance, love, truth, purpose, so we get involved. I use this scripture, Philippians uh, chapter 4, verse 19. And my God will supply every need according to your, based from his riches in his glory and based from Jesus Christ. We go back to the needs. Once you start finding your needs, it becomes, and it's met, it becomes constant. You start pursuing it and it becomes worship. So my thoughts there is, what is worship? I keep on reading the word worship. So I research on it. Worship in the Middle, in the middle English era means workness. It means literally uh, during that time, people will say your, your workness, like your highness, your workness. Worship declares how worthy, what or who that, who, is to be valued, what or who needs to be praised, what or who needs to be served. For me, it's God. 
So I go back again to my slide about my, cal my calendar. In short, God will always be my calendar. He's the start, he's the end, because he's worth it. As we talk about worship, worthness, in the next few weeks, we will be covering a series about worship, the personal stories of our speakers. And I hope during that, uh, in the next few weeks, you will gain insights, you will hear some truth, or more importantly, you will hear your, your truth. And by the end of the day, I hope that you will also find God in the journey. I hope it's okay. Uh, let's end with, uh, with a prayer before I ask everyone for a last activity for the breakout. Okay? Uh, so, dear God, I thank you again for tonight's topic. The topic of worship, the topic of needs leading to pursuing to worship. And I hope everyone that listens here will find their, the truth. They will find what is important and most important, I hope that God, that they will also find you. Thank you again for tonight. And I hope that it will be a good discussion uh, later for everyone. Sylvie Suti, in your mighty name. Amen. Um, before we break out, uh, the discussion point is very simple. What do you do if you don't win? When was the last event that you actually lost an event, a client, someone? How did you deal with losing? The last challenge I will give you is, will you try and give to God what you lost? It can be yes, it can be no, it can be maybe. Thank you again, everyone.